everyone! If you're in the market for a Rolex Pepsi GMT but can't get one at retail or you're like me and you're not willing to spend 10000 plus on this watch or on that watch, then this GMT uh, may be the one for you. Well, maybe. Hey everyone, my name is Miguel, but some really good friends call me Mikey. But until you're subscribed to the channel, have left a comment, and have hit the like button, please address me as Mr. Miguel. <laughs> Just kidding. With that out of the way, let's get into a bit of history. In my Black Bay 58 video, I told you that in 1946, Mr. Hans Wilsdorf, the founder of Rolex, offered a new collection of watches to the world called Tudor. The aim of the Tudor brand, according to Mr. Wilsdorf, was to offer a more affordable watch that would preserve the Rolex reputation for quality. The modern Tudor is not inferior to Rolex, so if you have that mindset, then you and I think very differently and you may want to click away. Okay, you're still here? For all my real Tudor fanboys and girls, let's continue. This specific Tudor Black Bay GMT pays homage to the Rolex GMT. The Rolex GMT master story began in 1954. You see, Rolex introduced a reference 6542. The watch was housed in the classic 38mm Oyster case, and this was one of the first sports watches from Rolex. The watch had two innovations at the time. The first was the dig magnifying bubble, or to use Rolex terminology, the Cyclops, and the second was the dual time zone complication. The American airline company Pan American Airlines, or Pan Am for short, approached Rolex and asked them to develop the watch for their pilots. This partnership led to the development of the GMT Master Reference 6542. Let's fast forward to March 2018, Tudor released this Tudor Black Bay GMT alongside the Black Bay 58 at Baselworld. The GMT is a handsome stainless steel travel watch based on the format established by the Black Bay dive watches while offering true GMT functionality too. The Black Bay GMT is entirely constructed of 316L stainless steel. The case measures in at 41mm, it's 15mm from lug to lug, and it's 14.7mm thick, has a lug width of 22mm, a water resistance of 200m, and it weighs in at 188 grams with the supplied bracelet. The case of course is finished very well and lacks crown guards, has a mixture of polished and brushed surfaces. The beveling plays with the light and gives it a nice refined look. I have the same complaint as with my Black Bay 58, and that is that I'm not too happy about the lack of drill holes on the case. This makes changing the straps a little difficult. The 7.9mm steel crown has been signed with the Tudor Rose, and is very easy to screw in and screw out, and due to its size is very easy to grip. On the back we do find a sterile screw down case back with some Tudor information on it. Just like with Tudor Rolex case backs, the sterile look gives this watch a true to a watch feel and look. Protecting the dial is a nice domed sapphire crystal with AR on the inside. When looking at the crystal at certain angles, it distorts the dial just like an acrylic crystal, and that of course is reminiscent of vintage watches. The dial of course, very much Black Bay. The elements on the dial are essentially the same as a Black Bay 41, however it does feature some differences. The GMT has a matte black dial with rich texture. This gives the watch a very warm and understated appearance, and that honestly is one of the main reasons a lot of Tudor watch models speak to me. They really do fly under the radar. We find some Mariner style hour markers composed of loom filled silver finish applied indices, as well as to the full patina that we find on the other range of Black Bay models. The luminous material has been made in white color, and it makes the watch look a lot more modern. Around the edge of the dial, we do find close index hash marks for the minutes and seconds, rendered in a white color. At the 12 o'clock, we do find the Tudor logo along with the word Geneve. Above the 6 o'clock, we find the words GMT, chronometer officially certified. And at the very bottom of the dial, we will find the words Swiss made. The snowflake hour hand has become standard on the Black Bay line. And personally, I think it offers a very relevant connection to Tudor's history. The hands have a silver polish finish and they of course match the applied indices. The GMT is finished in red and it plays off of course with the red on the bezel. On the right hand side of the dial we do find a date window that has not been framed and that is a good call. It doesn't break the symmetry and the white color date wheel matches the color of the loom. 
Now on to my favorite thing on any watch, the Lume of course. Tudor is giving us grade A Swiss Super Luminova that shines very bright and lasts a few hours for legibility in different conditions. The Lume has been applied to the indices and the hands and it's nice when I get a watch that's to the level in terms of Lume to my Seiko watches. Yes, in my opinion Seiko has the best Lume in the market. In short, legibility in low light conditions will never be an issue with this watch. The bi-directional 24 hour bezel may look very similar to the GMT Master, but I can assure you they're quite different. The bezel is constructed of aluminum and it lacks the brightness or saturation of colors of Rolex's current red and blue Cerachrome bezel. What Tudor is offering us instead is a subtle combo of a desaturated deep navy blue and a red burgundy. The bezel is matte finish and I think that was a great call out honestly from a tutor as it gives this watch not only that vintage aesthetic but also that really cool to a watch look. Of course one of the cool things about aluminum as opposed to ceramic is that it will definitely age with time and in my opinion it just looks awesome. Powering this watch is Tudor's MT5652 movement and the GMT functionality is integrated rather than modular making it possible for the Black Bay GMT to be as thick as a standard Black Bay diver. This movement has been cost certified, has a power reserve of 70 hours, it ticks at 4 hertz, and offers a silicone balance spring along with bidirectional winding, and the movement is comprised of 27 joules. I'll be honest, this movement offers an incredible value. It's not very often that we find a true in-house movement with the same functionality as this. One of the main features, of course, of this watch is the GMT functionality. Tudor made it super easy to set a new local time when traveling. All you need to do is withdraw the crown to its middle position and turn it. The main hour hand responds by advancing or retreating in hour increments while the movement continues to run. The 24 hour hand preserves the home time or the time in a designated second time zone. The hour hand moves in steps forward or back to show the different time zones and at the same time it carries a date display along with it. All this occurs without halting the balance, which means that the exact time is always preserved to the second. I know at some point these movements were having issues with the date complication, but in the few months that I've owned this watch, I've had zero issues. The GMT is offered on a fabric strap, leather strap, or bracelet. I of course would recommend getting this model or any watch for that matter on a bracelet. Let me first uh, cover something that people have talked about negatively about and that is the use of full rivets. Look, uh, once this watch is on your wrist you can't even tell and if it bothers you that much then buy the watch on a fabric strap, leather strap, but we all know that these rivets actually served a purpose for Rolex watches back in the 50s uh, but obviously this is just paying homage to it. The bracelet is finely brushed which gives it a rugged and sporty look and we do find polishing on the sides. The link and end links are solid and it uses screws to size the bracelet. The clasp has three holes for micro adjustment and for me personally I can't wear it on the bracelet since it either fits me too tight or too loose and for reference I have a 6 and 7 8 inch wrist. However, if you want to keep it on the bracelet, my friend Larry over at Uncle Seiko now offers half links for the stock bracelet and that seems to have solved the issue for many. Tudor did introduce what they call T-Fit or Rapid Adjustment System to adjust the length of the bracelet in 5 positions until 8mm, but that T-Fit system is available in their Black Bay 58 bronze model and the new GMT Pro only. So the clasp is shaped like the Tudor Shield logo and it has a flip lock to keep it in place and of course thanks to the ceramic balls on the side of the clasp it is very satisfying opening and closing the clasp. In terms of wearability this has to be up there with my Bulova Lunar Pilot and that is not a positive comparison. This watch is very heavy on the bracelet and the only way I wear this watch is on an aftermarket strap. Take for example this blue tropic style strap from 7 friends and watches. The strap is very comfortable and it actually has some nice weight to it. However, it's super supple. The watch looks sporty yet it's super comfortable on the wrist. I also think it looks great and a bit more elegant on this 7 friends and watches natural leather strap. Although this is a very sporty looking watch, I love the juxtaposition of putting it on a more dressy strap. With my wrist being 6 and 7 8 inches, this watch definitely feels big. I've been trying to wrap my head around why this watch feels so big. Is it the 50mm lug to lug distance? 
is it the almost 15 millimeter thickness? Hmm, I think it's a combination of both. Therefore, I really don't wear this watch as much as I should. Let me talk about some of the pros and some of the cons. Let's start off with the cons. So number one is the size of the watch. It's big. To be honest, I was extremely disappointed when Tudor released the Pro instead of the Pepsi in the 58 case. Second would have to be the bracelet. Tudor needs to either do half links or introduce a T-Fit system in the Black Blade line of watches. Third and final con for me is the overall weight of the watch. I mean, this thing is almost 200 grams on the bracelet. I definitely have wrist fatigue after a full day of use. Okay, so let's move on to the pros. Number one has to be that this watch is not really an homage to the Rolex GMT Master. It is a sibling for a fraction of the cost. Therefore, it comes with tons of heritage. Second, water resistance. Not only is Tudor giving us a GMT functionality, but they are also giving us 200 meters of water resistance. In short, this is a dive watch with a GMT functionality. Third and final point is the overall construction and finish of the watch. It really punches above its price point. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on this watch. I commend Tudor for always being the playful, the daring child in the family. I love Tudor watches, but this GMT is simply too big for my taste. But don't let that discourage you from owning one. That's just my personal opinion. Overall, the watch punches above its price point. It's reliable, it's beautiful, and it comes with a lot of cool features that can be useful in your everyday life, especially if you travel a lot. If you made it to the end of the video, Thank you so much and I do have a confession to make. I already sold the watch, but don't worry, I picked up another GMT watch, but it's not Swiss. If you want to find out what it is, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow me over on Instagram. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. Take care, and as always my friends, stay humble.